entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Tom is here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am building something that I've wanted to build for a very long time. In 2000, a movie called Gladiator came out with Russell Crowe, and like most teenagers of the time, I was pretty obsessed with the movie, quoting it, I even bought one of the replica swords for it, uh, and I always kind of wanted that helmet, but I didn't want to pay the ridiculous prices that they were asking for, so I thought, why not? go back to 2000 and make something that I've wanted for a while. Um, I do want to point out that in this video, I got very discouraged. I started building it and realized about halfway through that it wasn't looking like I wanted it to as far as the details. And I just kind of pushed it off to the side and let that project die for quite a while. And recently I kind of got it back on the table and kind of figured out where I messed up on the template and had to rebuild the whole thing completely. So instead of completely scrapping it, you get two builds for the price of one and maybe even more than that. Uh, if you're not familiar with Gladiator, MF Doom, a rapper from England, was also uh, a fan of at least the mask part of Maximus's helmet. And so I guess you could use it for either or if you wanted to. But without further ado, today we are building a Maximus helmet from the movie Gladiator out of EVA foam. Let's get to building. If you would like to build your own, look in the description below this video. The very last link is the template. It's saved as a PDF and hosted on Adobe Creative Cloud. You can download it, print it out, and you're caught up with me. My cover page explains what all the markings are and the colors on all the pieces. Each piece has where angle cuts may be, foam sizes used, and the parts needed for duplication. I trace my pattern onto some 6mm EVA foam, then cut it all out. The head cap was the easy part of the build to template out. Without the front face mask, it kind of looks like a foam mullet or something. I contact cement all my edges, let them sit for a few minutes, then begin tacking them together. I start by closing up the large darts in the pattern, those are the big V's. Then using my registration lines, I line up the parts to each other. Assemble one side at a time, and when you have both, join them down the middle. The cheek part has a couple of layers to it. You trace the whole part for a left and a right side, then cut out the shapes next to the ear and the mouth protrusion. On the finished template, I'll make sure and mark it so that it makes it abundantly clear that there are extra parts there. I contact cement the adjoining sides and tack them together. To smooth over my edges, I hit it with a stone bit on my rotary tool. Thank you. 
Now time to assemble the rest of the face mask. I have the template laying out to one side to show you how the parts correspond with each other. Trust the registration marks as some of them kind of look like they don't belong in the certain areas in the wrong direction in the eyebrow and forehead area, but just trust them. They're, they're where they're supposed to be. This movie really sparked my interest in Italian history, so much so that the first trip my wife and I took internationally was to Italy. I stood in the Colosseum, had a picnic next to the aqueducts, ate real Italian pizza, and hit up most of the major cities across the country. So much culture, history, and art at every single turn. I had some issues with attaching the eyebrows to the top of the nose, so I ended up making another piece to add to the second take of this build. I didn't have a video clip of it, but I'll draw like a little diagram on the template to make it abundantly clear how to position it on your finished helmet. I have lots of people leave comments about how I make things look easy. One, I have like thousands of hours of practice at this point building stuff. Two, I struggle with certain things like a lot of other people do, but you don't see a lot of my problem solving on the videos. And three, the video edits make it seem quicker and seamless than they actually are. Depending on the difficulty of the prop, one build can take anywhere from five hours to 40 hours to do. At this point in this build, I realized that the face mask doesn't line up with the base helmet. The forehead piece is too large and not angled properly for the eyebrow. I ended up cutting it off to try and adjust it and got frustrated at that point and was just like forget this and it laid unfinished for about a month or two. I adjusted the angle of the forehead piece and made the top piece extend out further from the base. Because of these two changes, I had to readjust all the other parts connecting those parts and it was a lot of trial and error. I also slanted the nose back a little bit more as it goes up to the brow. For some reason, I didn't record the mohawk piece, but it's simple enough with positioning once you get the face mask on. Now that I have adjusted the template, I went ahead and built the entire helmet over again, I'll save you the time and just skip all the repeated steps. <laughs> For the spikes, I cut up some 20mm EVA dowels into one and a half chunks. Then using a box cutter, I carved an angle from the tip to widen out as it reached the bottom of the cylinder. To refine the shape, I used a sanding drum on my rotary tool, followed by smoothing it out with a stone bit. A lot of the reference images that I saw had different amounts of spikes, so I'm not 100% sure of what it should actually be, but I went with 16, making 8 for each side. My spike may be a little larger than they need to be, but I like how it looked.
I marked the general area I wanted the spikes to go, doing my best to keep it as balanced as I could on both sides. I spread a thin layer of contact cement across the helmet and the bottom of the spikes, let them sit for a few minutes until they were no longer wet to the touch, then tacked them on. If I redid this build, I would probably shorten them just a little bit and I'd probably change the shape of the mohawk. My 3D model that I used as a reference was not very accurate to the movie version, but oh well. Off the temple detail below the brow is this decorative rivet that I'm assuming is a pivot point for the helmet base and the mask. I got a good view of it and saw that it was a base circle with a flower on top of it that's like two layers of four petals. So I carved out a little V groove down the middle of each petal, super glued them to the circle, and then super glued the whole assembly to the mask. Instead of throwing away this other helmet, I thought I would just finish it a little differently, leaving off the spikes and giving it maybe a hammered metal look. I put a small round stone bit on my rotary tool and then spent the next two hours divoting the crap out of the surface. This texture helps hide seam lines and hopefully will distract everyone from the fact that it is inaccurate. Thank <laughs> you. Two coats of Plasti Dip. The movie version gets a silver spray paint coat and the hammered version gets a copper color. If you have watched my channel for any length of time, you know that this is way too clean for my taste. So it's time to dirty this bad boy up. I start by dabbing on some Platifex acrylic paint sporadically and wiping most of it off. Then I go into the cracks and the crevices to put it in areas where dirt would naturally build up. I also do some washes by watering down the paint and hitting random areas. I used a dark brown, light brown, and a black to get variations in the colors that I wanted. Thank <laughs> you. For the copper one, I wanted to do a slight patina effect. I didn't want to make it full-fledged Statue of Liberty, so I might um, not follow the instructions here on this box. I've used Modern Masters metal effects quite a bit, and I know that varying up the application can alter the end result. So instead of putting on the primer layer, I skipped it, and I only put on one layer of the metal layer. It gives me less of an aged look. So I slather on a layer of the copper and let it dry.
Once the metal layer had dried, you simply spray the surface with the patina spray. The chemicals in the solution react with the metal flakes in the paint and cause it to oxidize, giving you the nice shades of green and variation that you want in a patina aged metal. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I think they turn out pretty cool. Even the messed up one has its uh, nice features, I guess. I really like how the divots turned out and then putting that patina on it just kind of sold it even more for something that was very aged. The movie style version, the one that was corrected and hopefully a little bit closer to what is on screen, I I really, really like this this particular helmet. Uh, it looks pretty iconic to me. It fits that same kind of format, I guess. And I, I went ahead and dirtied the mess out of it. I thought about putting fake blood on it, but pulled myself back just a little bit. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to either save a project that has failed or push through and make something even better in version two and not give up when you hit a roadblock. Hopefully. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. I'm gonna wear Maximus's, and uh, you can wear this patinaed copper one. All right, you're gonna have to bow your head just a little bit so I can get over it, so. Yep, yep, there you go. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining the people listed here with me over on Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.